Welcome to Algebra 1, Unit 6, Lesson 6-6, Parallel and Perpendicular Lines, Part 1, Pearson Algebra 1, Copyright 2009. I'm Mr. Polarski. Our objectives today are, I will be able to determine if two lines are parallel, and I will be able to write the equation of a parallel line. Keywords in this lesson are going to be slope. We learned about that in Lesson 6 when we've been using it pretty often in this unit on linear equations. Uh, that's an important part of a linear equation is the slope. Uh, point slope form. Oh, one more thing about slope in this lesson. We're going to be uh, using the variable m to represent it in, most often in the slope intercept form and in the point slope form. We talked about the point slope form in lesson 6.5. The point slope form is of course y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. Here, I'll write it for you. Slope intercept form we talked about in lesson 6.2. And that equation is y is equal to mx plus b. We'll be using both of those in this lesson. And parallel lines is the new keyword from this lesson 6.6. So we're going to see how these words come into play. Let's take a look at parallel lines and how we figure them out. Algebraic property, slopes of parallel lines. Non-vertical lines are parallel if they have the same slopes and different y-intercepts. Any two vertical lines are parallel. Let's take a look at that definition or that property again. Non-vertical lines are parallel if they have the same slope. So key words here, same slope and different y-intercepts. Both of those have to be true. Any two vertical lines are parallel. Now here's an example. The equations y is equal to 2 thirds x plus 1 and y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 3 have the same slope of 2 thirds and different y-intercepts. The graphs of the two equations are parallel. So if we take a look at what that means in terms of a graph, we can see here I have the equations or entered into this online graphing calculator, 2 thirds x plus 1 and 2 thirds x minus 3. When I graph it, the y-intercept of 1 will be in red and the y-intercept of minus 3 or negative 3 will be in blue. Remember, this is the slope-intercept form. That's how we can tell the slope and the intercept so quickly. So when I graph them, we can see the red graph 2 thirds x plus 1 has a intercept of 1. And the blue equation 2 thirds x minus 3 has a y intercept of negative 3. And the slopes, if we take a look at the slope of the red line, 2 thirds means we'll go up 2. So up 2 and to the right 3. And that'll give us our next point on the line, which in this case happens to be 3 comma 3. Take a look at the blue line, up 2, to the right 3. Now I didn't get that perpendicular, but that's okay. You get the idea up 2 to the right 3. You can see they do have the same slope. two to the right three or two thirds and those two lines are parallel so there's a visual way you can see that so that's what we're working with today parallel lines and you can see that they'll never cross So that's parallel lines. So let's take a look at the kind of problems you're going to have to solve in your assignment. Example 1t, determining whether lines are parallel. Are the graphs of y is equal to negative 2x minus 1 and 4x plus 2y is equal to 6 parallel? Are these graphs going to be parallel? Well, one way would be to graph them, or another way would be to find their slopes and their y-intercepts. And to graph this equation, we'd have to solve it for y anyway. Any graphing calculator or 
online graphing calculator is going to have you enter it in the slope intercept form. So here we have an equation that's in standard form and we need to put it into the slope intercept form y is equal to mx plus b and now first what we want to do is really ultimate goal is we want to find the slope of each line and then find the y-intercept. Once we have those two items, we'll be able to determine if the lines are parallel. And here I'm going to use the symbol for parallel. So we're going to do these three steps. So first we're going to find the slope of this line since it's in the slope intercept form, which is y is equal to mx plus b. The slope of this line, m, the coefficient on the x, is equal to negative 2. The y-intercept of this line, the slope intercept form has a plus sign here, so when it's a minus sign, the y-intercept is equal to a negative 1. Since it's a plus and when it's a minus sign, we bring it out as a negative 1. It's good. So for this line, to find the slope, we have to put it into slope-intercept form. Because what we need to do is compare the slope and the y-intercepts. If they have the same slope and different y-intercepts, then the lines are parallel. So we need to solve this equation that's in standard form for y. It's a pretty easy process if you look at what we need to make it look like. We need to have the y term on the left of the equal sign, the x term on the right of the equal sign, and the constant term on the right of the equal sign. So we have to move this x term to the right, and we'll have to divide by 2 to solve this equation for y. So we'll subtract 4 from x from both sides. These become 0, leaving us 2y. On the left of the equal sign and on the right, we'll have negative 4x plus 6. Now, this is a plus sign right here because this is a positive 6. Next, we need to divide both sides of this equation by 2. 2y divided by 2 leaves us y, which what we is what we want. We want the y by itself because we want it in the y is equal to mx plus b form or the slope-intercept form. Simplifying the right-hand side, negative 2x, that comes from negative 4x divided by 2, and you also have to divide 6 by 2, uh, plus 6 divided by 2 gives us a plus 3. So now that it's in this y is equal to mx plus b form, we can identify the slope of this line and the slope of this line, and I know I'm Actually, I'm going to move that down here. I'm going to move all of this down here. So the slope of the second line is negative 2. We can see that right here. And the y-intercept is a plus 3, or a positive 3. So when we compare to determine if the lines are parallel, when we compare them, they have the same slope and they have different y-intercepts, so they are parallel. We want to write that out. We want to write that they have the same slope and they have different y-intercepts. So here's how we could write that out. here you can abbreviate this is the symbol for parallel the lines are parallel uh, the lines are parallel because they have different slopes uh, I shouldn't have put a period there I want to put the word and and different y-intercepts. And they have the same slopes, not different slopes. They have the same slopes. 
my mind got ahead of my hand. They have the same slopes. And different y-intercepts. So recap example 1t, you get kind of lost in the work a little bit. Uh, first, we found the slope of this line right here, y minus negative 2x minus 1. Uh, the slope is negative 2 because of the y is equal to mx plus b or the slope intercept form. And the y intercept was a negative 1. We had to do some work on this equation to put it in the slope intercept form. We had to use our algebra tools. The slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is 3, so they had the same slope and different y-intercepts. Example 2, writing equations of parallel lines. Write an equation for a line that contains the point negative 2, 3, and is parallel to y is equal to 5 halves x minus 4. So in this problem, we have to write an equation of a line. Now, it doesn't say what form. I'm going to say right now, we're going to write the final answer in slope intercept form. So that's not written down anywhere, so let's write that down. The final answer will be in slope intercept form. Ran out of room there, but that's the word form, slope intercept form. So, what we have to do here is first, we need to find the slope of the given line. need to find the slope of the given line. This is the given line, and the slope of the given line is 5 halves because it's in slope-intercept form. Again, with the slope-intercept form, it's easy to identify the slope. So the slope is 5 halves. The second step is to use the point you're given. What I mean by that is write it down next to your slope. So this would be really your first step is to write this down. Write down the slope that you, you're given. Second step would be to write down the point that you're given. The third step is to recognize that you need to use point slope at this point. Use the point slope form. So you want to write that point slope form down, which is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. What I mean by use that is write it down and substitute these values in. As I've done through this whole unit, anytime we're working with an ordered pair, you can label it x sub 1, y sub 1. That should be a y, not an x right there. We need to substitute these numbers in for these variables. So our equation is going to be y minus the y value up here, 3, equal to m, the slope, 5 halves, times the quantity, x minus. Now here we have minus 2. So we could write that as minus 2, at x minus a negative 2, or we could just write that as x plus a positive 2. So there we have the equation in point slope form, but we want to put it into slope intercept form. So we want to take this form we have right here, and we want to put it into this form here. y is equal to mx plus b. 
got to look at what that means. What we have here is we have the y term on the left, and we have a constant term on the left of the equal sign. On the right term, we have a x term, a variable term, and a constant term. This will ultimately be distributed, this 5 half, so it's a part of the variable term x and the constant term. So we need to get this minus 3 over to here because we want to solve for y. So to solve for y here, it takes a few steps. This is what we're trying to make it look like. To solve for y, we first have to distribute this 5 halves. We have to distribute this 5 halves to the x and to the 2. Now, don't get lost on me. 5 halves times x is 5 halves x. This is a positive times a positive, so we're going to have a plus sign here. And 5 halves times 2 is 5. There's two ways of thinking it. This is an algebra video, so you really should understand where this 5 comes from. Let me break it down for you real quick. 5 halves times 2. 5 times 2 is 10, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. That's how you mentally do that real quick, because it's 2 over 1. 5 times 2 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. On the left-hand side, we still have y minus 3. Comparing to what we want to look like, we want it to look like this here in the red. y is equal to mx plus b. So we just have to get rid of this minus 3. We get rid of that minus 3 by adding 3 to each side. And the equation that we're looking for here is this. y is equal to 5 halves x. Do this math here. That's an 8. We put a plus sign in there because it's positive. So the equation we're looking here, looking for here, is y is equal to 5 halves x plus 8. This is the equation that is parallel to this equation and goes through the point negative 2, 3. Now we can check that on the graph. So here we are at a graph, uh, the online graphing tool that I use. Um, this equation here is the equation that we found. Or no, this equation here is the equation that we're given. The, the red equation is going to be the equation that we're given. And the blue equation is going to be the equation that we had found. This is the given equation. We know this is going to be parallel because it has the same slope. It's going to have an intercept of 8. That's irrelevant. We were told that this equation is going to go through the point negative 2, 3. It's going to go through the point negative 2, 3. And so when we graph it, we're going to want to see if it goes through the point negative 2, 3. So that will be the blue equation that we want to check. And the neat thing about this graphing calculator is over here you have a nice little table that it makes. And you can change values, uh, which is pretty cool. But this, since I have this one highlighted, meaning that it's white for this, this gray color, um, this table represents what's going on with this equation, this blue line here. And we can see when x is negative 2, when x is a negative 2, that y is in fact a 3. Now that might be a little dark uh, to see, but uh, it is in fact 2, 3, and we could use a line uh, from the origin to see if it is the points negative in question is negative 2 positive 3 we can see uh, visually that we do get uh, the point negative 2 3 on the graph so uh, the work is good this has been mr. Polarski with parallel lines thanks for watching bye bye